so you want to be a fighter. Aside from using your whole body as a weapon, the sisters from Annika use a variety of bodily functions to put you in the dirt. And while some people might enjoy that concept, due to the votes in the last video, I've decided to do a full breakdown of each fighter class so you can choose which one might be fit for you. If you saw the previous breakdown of the Shushire Bros, then you know how this video will go. But for those that are new, we'll be discussing playstyle, where I'll discuss the pros and cons of playing the class, beginner friendliness and skill ceiling, end game potential and end game content, and of course, last but not least, aesthetics. So let's rip the band-aid right off and address the elephant in the room. But greedy, it's not only sisters in Annika, there's actually a guy called the Striker. Well, to me, he doesn't count as guy because he dresses like a side character in a Bollywood movie. He looks like he works as a busboy for the Grand Budapest Hotel. I really saw the launch of this character and I remember he was wearing an Apu hat. You know Apu, the monkey from Aladdin, the animated movie. They've since removed that image of Striker and replaced it with a cooler one, but you can't take that image burned into the back of my retinas. If you haven't noticed by now, I have a pretty biased opinion on male character models aside from the Shushire brothers, mainly due to the fact that they exude not enough manly energy. It's like they need to get with the program and snap into a Slim Jim. But how many high school boys does it take to change a light bulb? Ah! What a for life? Yeah! Into a Slim Jim! So let's get on with the striker then. Aside from my highly biased opinion, it's a decent class that has crit damage debuff utility and plays a lot like the War Dancer or the Battlemaster as we used to call it. It's a fast fluid class where you build up elemental orbs and set up a damage window with your debuff then unleash your flashy elemental spenders to do big damage. I will say that the skill animations do look great so I'm not a complete hater. Is it beginner friendly? Yes, this class is easy enough to get started on but as for the skill ceiling, it is on the higher side to perfect your window timings among the chaos of raid mechanics. You'll have to do a lot of positioning because your damage comes from back attacks. As for the end game, this is a tryhard class and you will be busting your ass. It's a lot like the war dancer in this sense as the pace gets frenetic with the quick attacks, positioning and timing windows. This class is on the frailer side along with war dancer so mobility is your friend which you have plenty of. As for aesthetics, well you already know what I think, but to be fair I feel like they really did capture the martial artist aspect in the striker skill animation so well to the point that some moves look like they're straight out of a fighting game. And the new avatars actually look not bad, I would say the animations are some of the flashiest and coolest looking in the game. Next up is the scrapper. This is my second favorite fighter class because it plays the most like a shushire bro. Scrapper is like the oldest sister that wasn't raised correctly because his parents are only human and they didn't do such a good job on their first attempt parenting. But as the first child, she grew up a little messed up in the head and decided to beat the change out of everyone that stared at her sideways. If they don't swap the skill sounds for NAU release, you can hear her scream during skills and the pain of her life come through because she sounds like a fucking velociraptor. No joke. He fights like one too because of the high speed rushing in and in your face style she possesses. The massive gauntlets she uses feel weighty and powerful in your attacks. Some might find her a bit clunky at first, but it's not slow enough that it would deter your enjoyment. It's very slight and compared to other classes she's still decently fast. This class is easy to pick up and start out of the box. It's straightforward enough and has a lot of movement skills to get out of danger. The only thing that might cause problems is that some skill animations are long and they might cause you to get hit if you're not careful. The skill ceiling is mid to high on this character. Fighter classes with their superior mobility I feel all have that ace up their sleeve which when utilized properly can become a huge opportunity for greeting DPS and in turn bigger DPS without getting hit. Aesthetically, the infighter fights like a goon but looks like an elite female athlete competing at the highest levels of their respective field. I suddenly feel way more interested in track and field than I used to be. Anyways, the giant gauntlets that she dons just look super badass and I'd say out of the fighters that scrapper looks the most menacing by far. Next we got the Landsmaster. In terms of playstyle, Lancer is my favorite. This is like the sister that left home early because she was tired of infighter shit and opened up her own business selling crystals on Etsy or some shit. Regardless, her life's in order because of the way she finessed it, which is why she's in a good place now. I'm surprised this class wasn't in the launch just like the destroyer, but I have a feeling they'll be coming together soon, as long as that sounded. This class was fixed somehow because the first time I played it, I was not impressed, but I think they made the stance switching smoother and now it plays like a dream. You have insanely slick movement, fluid, close, mid, and long range attacks, and just overall style points. This is the flashiest class that you can stun on like if you were in the early 2000s and owned spinner rims. Except it's not a fad. This class has it all and it can kill it in both PvP and PvE. As for being beginner friendly, this might be tough to get used to the stand switching and the difference in ranges that you should utilize in your attacks. But once you bridge that gap, the class is pretty fluid to play. 
As for the skill ceiling though, this is a high skill ceiling class and it rewards you well for playing well. Anyone can hit the full bar, stand switch, rinse and repeat, but to do it as quickly as possible without getting hit during a complex raid is the big test that many do fail. Once the moves all become second nature and ingrained into your muscle memory, it'll be a lot easier to reach god level on this character, which is very possible. As for aesthetics, she's got the giant spear that looks badass with the upgrade aura. You'll see them vaulting around on their lances and cartwheeling out of life-threatening danger. When she gets moving on the battlefield, she looks so flashy and sharp in her movements and it's a treat to watch good lancers just finessing content, or better yet, you're the one doing the Dr. J layup on the whole team. Once you get that stance switching mastered, this class is like the Mercedes of fighters. Just smooth. Next, we got Battlemaster or War Dancer. This is like the youngest sister who went to college and finished her degree, but decided that kicking people in the head was way more fulfilling in life. She's got a good heart but constantly gets shafted by life and the nerfs that it throws at her. She done nothing wrong, Smilegate. I mean life. Why is she getting mistreated so badly? I made the War Dancer for a long time and when we got a huge nerf to our buffs, it completely took away our ability to deal damage in a powerful window. It was more like a half open damage window after the nerf so I quit the game, just enraged. This was one of the few nerfs that completely ruined the class back in the day and I'm glad Smilegate hasn't made too many of the same mistakes since then. Recently, they got nerfed again, but only because they were completely OP with the new armor set bonuses. I feel like for some reason, the devs at SG keep an eye on War Dancer. I'm not sure why though. Anyways, this class is super tight, as in the control, so the perverts out there can just relax. Every attack and movement feels very intuitive and purposeful with pinpoint accuracy. If I had to describe the way a War Dancer handles, it would be sharp. She's very sharp. It's like playing with a really sharp dagger. She sets up a damage window just like how Striker copied her, and she bursts into her spenders after building her orbs up. This is pretty beginner friendly because of the very tight controls you have and one of the quickest spacebar dodges in the game. You won't be getting hit as much as other classes and you can greed damage pretty easily and dodge out the last second with this class. As for skill ceiling though, it's high because BM is a super frenetic class where you must go ham in order to maximize the deeps. This class may be one of the most expensive classes to actually reap benefits from. Your engravings and armor has to be set up optimally or else it won't perform nearly as well. Aesthetically, BM looks like the cuter, tamer sister of the infighter, but makes up for it with quicker wit and some serious burns, elementally speaking. Her weapons aren't menacing at all and if you like to trick people into thinking you're harmless, only to hurt them later on, then this might be the class for you. Next we have the Soul Master or the Soul Fist. Aside from the amazing job of naming its battle state, the Soul Master is a very different class from the rest. This sister was like the shut-in, reading mangas and diagrams on how to make C4. She leaves everyone alone, but if you bother her, she'll put all that reading time to use and bombing you with the juiciest ball of energy you've ever seen in your life. This character is a huge nod to Dragon Ball lore. The Super Saiyan looking states, the Spirit Bomb, and even the Kamehameha. In combat, at first, it may feel very awkward and offbeat. Movement and ranges of the attacks require some quick planning and know-how. All of this is just a seasoning of peppering the enemy with shots because soon you're gonna give them the main dish, the big kibosh, the ultimate uniball teabag. Three days later. Aside from it doing major damage, it takes an eternity and a half to actually drop, and in that time there's a good chance that the boss has moved, which might result in some gamer rage and a few seconds off of your lifespan. When it does hit though, and crit on top of that, it's pure bliss, and a major chunk off the boss's health bar. This class may not be beginner friendly for all. It's gonna take some getting used to, the attack ranges, positioning, and movement, as well as juggling your hype state until you get the engraving to reach level 3 right away. You dropping your balls onto the boss's face is also gonna have to be timed with perfect intuition when he's not down. Later on, this class can feel gimmicky and you may crave a more consistent playstyle. This is purely preference though, so I won't speak for everyone. As for aesthetics, if you're a fan of Dragon Ball, then this class is the ultimate fan service for you. They've definitely got the over-the-top flashy martial arts style of fighting with weaving in and out and all around during combat. Her weapon is like some kind of floating spirit talisman, which looks pretty cool, but not as noticeable as the other sisters. What is noticeable is the giant ass ball she drops like it's New Year's Eve in Manhattan. What class archetype do you want to see next? Let me know in the comments. Like and sub, go hug your mom or your grandma. See ya.